Hi everyone, this is ZF Mazibugo speaking. I'm going to take you through Engineering Science N3 for Report 191. Today we are going to do Module 7, which is Electricity. I've used Engineering Science N3 book by G. Olivia and the previous question papers for April 2019 and the one for July 2015. Let's start by defining electricity. It is the presence and the flow of electric charges or electrons in one direction and it is also a form of energy which we use to power machines and into electrical devices. Electricity is divided into four parts. We've got the first part that is with cells, internal resistance of cells and the EMF, where the second part deals with electrolysis and Coulomb's law. The third part is dealing with Joe's law and the fourth part is dealing with the transformers. Let's start with the first part that deals with cells, internal resistance of cells and the EMF. Here we have to calculate the total EMF for the cells in series, where EMF will be equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3, depending on the number of cells that you have. This means that the total EMF for the cells in series will be equal to the sum of the voltage in cells. And for the total EMF for the cells in parallel, your EMF will be equals to the voltage in cell times by the number of cells. The internal resistance of cells is measured across the cells. Let's define EMF and the potential difference. EMF is measured across the poles of the cells when there is no current flowing through, which means that it will be in an open circuit. Whilst the potential difference is the voltage measured across the poles of the cells when there is current flowing, which means that will be in a closed circuit. Let's take formulas. Current will be equal to EMF over the total resistance, which would be I equals to V over RT, that is Ohm's law. RT can be expressed as R times by N, which is the internal resistance from the cells and the number of cells that you have, plus the internal resistance in the resistors. How do we calculate the total resistance if we've got the resistors in parallel? If there are two resistors, your RT will be equal to product over sum. If you've got more than two resistors, you will have one over RT, equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, again, depending on the number of resistors that you'll have. Here, the voltage will remain the same, but the current will differ. For the resistors in series, your RT will be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3, again, depending on the number of resistors that you have. Here, the current will be the same, but there will be a volt drop through each resistor. Let's take workouts. From April 2019, question 7.2. We've got a battery that has an internal resistance of 0 0.8 ohm and is connected in series with a 4 ohm resistor and an unknown resistor. When the circuit is closed, the potential difference across the 4 ohm resistor it's 8 volts, and that across the unknown resistor is 10 volts. We have to calculate the following. A, the current through the resistors. B, the resistance of the unknown resistor. I've just drawn the skeleton of the circuit from the statement. I will take the first resistor and calculate with it the current through the circuit. Because if you've got the resistors in series, the current will be the same throughout. So your I will be equal to V over R, which will be equal to 8 over 4, and your current will be 2 amperes. And for the resistance of the unknown resistor, your R will be equal to V over I, which will be 10 over 2, and your resistance will be 5 ohms. Let's take electrolysis. 
Here we have to define the following terms. Coulomb, electrolyte, electrodes, electroplating, and electrochemical equivalent. I'm not going to spend time defining the following terms. You've got the definitions here. Let's take Faraday's law of electrolysis. We've got two laws, and the first one states as the mass of a given substance liberated at an electrode of a cell is, is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the cells. This is M equals to I times by Z times by T. Where M is the mass of the substance liberated in grams, and I is the current flowing in amperes, and Z is the electrochemical equivalent in grams per coulomb, and T is the current flowing in seconds. And the second law, when the same quantity of electricity pass through the different electrodes, the masses of the substance liberated at the electrodes are proportional to their respective masses or equi chemical equivalents. Let's take workout two, again from April 2019, question 7.2. We've got a current of 8 ohm that flows through a silver nitrate solution for two hours in order for, to electroplate an object. The electrochemical equivalent for silver is 0 0.001118 gram per coulomb. And we have to calculate the following. The amount of electric charge required to the mass of the silver deposited. Let's take A in order to calculate the amount of the electric charge needed. Q will be equal to IT, where I will be equal to 8 ampere, and the time that we are given is 2 hours. So we have to change this, those 2 hours to seconds. So this will be 8 times by 2 times by 60 times by 60. This part is changing hours to seconds. So we'll have a charge of 57,600 coulomb. And B, for the mass of silver, M will be equal to IT times by Z. And IT, it's Q. So we'll substitute with the charge times by 0 0.00118. So your mass will be 64.4 gram. Let's take a Joe's law. The heat generated in a conductor is directly proportional to the square of the current and the resistance and the time. There are three influence, sorry, there are three things that influence the amount of current or the amount of heat generated in a coil. One, the magnitude of resistance of the coil. Two, the magnitude of current flowing through the coil. And three, the time. So your Q is I squared times by R times by T or Q equals to V times by I times by T. We also calculate power, which will be equal to V times by I in watts. And also we calculate cost, which will be equal to energy times by price per unit. Let's take another workout from the book on page 17 of module 7. We've got a lamp of 100 watts. That works for 5 hours. If the voltage is 220 volts, we need to calculate the following. A, the current through the lamp. B, the energy generated in the time. C, the cost if the price of 3.6 megajoules of energy is 5 cent. Let's come to the solution, sorry. P will be equal to V times by I. Then we'll substitute it by the power in watts and 220 volts. 
So our current will be 0 0.455 amperes. And B, your Q will be I times by R times by T, or you can use V times by I times by T. 220 times by 0 0.445 times by 5 hours. We need to change these 5 hours to seconds again. So your Q will be 18 megajoules of a charge. So C, to calculate cost, energy times by price per unit. So this will be 1.8 megajoules divided by 3.6 megajoules times by 5 cents. This will be equal to 2.5 cents. Let's take the transformers. Transformers consist of the primary and the secondary windings. We've got N as the number of turns and V as the voltage and I as the current. So the voltage in primary divided by the voltage in secondary will be equal to the number of turns for primary divided by the number of turns for the secondary. Again, equals to the current in secondary over the current in primary. So the voltage ratio will be equal to the 10 ratio, which will be equal to 1 over the current ratio. So the power for the primary windings will be equal to the power for the secondary windings. These are formulas that we use in transformers. Let's take work out. This one is from July 2015, which is question 7.4. We've got a single transformer that has a primary voltage of 220 volt and the current of 21 ampere at a full load. The secondary current is a 7 ampere. And we have to calculate the following. The tens ratio primary to the secondary, B, the power, if the power factor is 0 0.866. Let's start by the tens ratio. I've used the number of 10 for primary over the number of 10 for the secondary equals to the current for secondary over the second current for the primary. This will be equal to 7 over 21, which will be 1 over 3. So for the ratio for the tens, you will have 1 is to 3. B, the power, where the power factor is 0 0.866, your power will be V times by I, the cos of theta, which will be equal to 220 times by 21, times by 0 0.866. So your power will be 4,092 watts, which will be 4 kilowatts. That will be the end of module 7. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.